Hey folks, today's the day we finish this aquarium. We're gonna add the missing components to it, including plants, heater, pump, light, all that. And it's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peg Tech. Uh, this is the continuing video of this uh, aquarium setup. We're gonna go ahead and add plants. So I, uh, now I know that the logs are gonna stay. We've got our hardscape kind of set up the way we like it. And we just need to add some plants to it and the missing components. So for a pump for this thing, we're gonna use this uh, Azu pump. It's actually a little big, so I'm not gonna be able to include this part, which kind of leaves this, this part open but it will mount like this here. There are little suction cups on the bottom. Uh, there's a little tube that leads up. Much like the flexes and things, uh, this tank comes with a little part. There's this part that fits on the tube. Then there's a part that fits on the other side uh, to act as a spray bar. Uh, this is the pump. Now with this on here, it's a little too big and I might be able to maybe trim this last little segment off right here. I could trim that off and it would fit but I think what I'm gonna do short term, like at least until there's there's things in here that could probably get in there, I'm gonna just take that off. That sort of leaves this exposed a little bit. I, I could take the pump out of the flex actually and use it too. It's about the same, it's really, uh, it's really very similar, but I'm curious to see how much water this thing will push through. So I've kind of got this good to go. I've pre-measured the hose, got this cut to where uh, it'll fit perfectly through the little spout over there. This works very much like the flex did. You know, you get your pump, the hose, and then the other part will just kind of connect to here to kind of bridge those two spots. Now for the filtration material, I am gonna pull the stuff that was in the flex. Uh, I've got that in my sump downstairs under the uh, 210, just kind of staying active, bioactive down there. I'm gonna add a little bit more biological material, but I am gonna go ahead and just take the sponge from that and, uh, and any of the existing uh, seasoned biological uh, ceramic material. I'm gonna add that into here as well. Now for a heater, I have the Awasa uh, 100 watt heater. Now I found that the heater that was included in the canister filter is working extremely well. Uh, the temperature that it's set to is, is basically the temperature that the aquarium is. It's kind of rare that I see it be like that pinpoint. Like usually it's a couple of degrees one way or the other. But so far from the only other heater that I've had from these guys, it's been extremely accurate. So I guess we'll see how this one does. But that's enough of that. Let's get straight into planting this thing. Okay, so uh, I've drained the tank down. I went ahead and I kind of cleaned off the glass so it's nice and clear for you guys and a little bit easier to see. What I'm gonna do now is start adding plants. Uh, normally I put all the same type of plants in at the same time but I've got all these in a bucket. So I'm gonna kind of just pull over what's on top will get, is what will get planted next. And it'll be a much more kind of a, we'll call it organic sort of experience <laughs> as I pull these plants out and kind of place them around in here. All right, so uh, let's get started. All right, so I've got my spray bottle ready so I can keep the, the plants moist. I'm gonna just go ahead and start pulling off the top. And the first thing, of course, I come across is some Vesuvius sword. I have a Vesuvius sword in a whole lot of different aquariums. But I think I'm going to go ahead and just include it in here too, just in case it does really well. Uh, I always try to just kind of keep some of this stuff going. So I'm going to stick some way in the back over here. Now, as I was pulling this apart, I came across a couple of really large, really large, well-developed, Anubius specimens. And so I'm going to work with them first. Uh, probably the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go through and make sure there aren't any really bad looking leaves on here. I want this to kind of grow with the wood. I'm trying to see which side. Okay, so that side's growing out. It's kind of growing from both sides too. And I want to make sure that these roots can get down to the substrate. They'll find their own way down there, but I might just kind of bisect the entire aquascape with this stuff.
I'm gonna put it kind of lower so these branches kind of come out the top. Curl it around a little bit. That's really nice. <laughs> it's always cool when you've got a really huge piece of plant to work with. And we actually have a few rather large specimens here. I'm going to have to go through and like I got another one here, but this has got some leaves at the end that aren't so great. Now, if memory serves, this is the one that was growing up the side of the, of the flex. And I'm going to just kind of do the same thing here. I'm going to put it in a very similar spot. Maybe it'll just kind of pick up where it left off if I can get it under this branch here. And I'm just going to have it kind of going up the side of this thing. I'll let the roots just kind of lay on the bottom. Those will eventually, um, those roots will find their way in. If you can kind of get it somewhere approximately close to the bottom of the tank, they will find their way in there. Uh, and these little branches should be just enough to kind of keep this thing weighted down and um, keep it from floating around. Same here. This is kind of in between these branches enough to pin them in. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff to keep Anubias where you want. A lot of people use uh, super glue and stuff like that, or you can tie it down. I prefer to just jam it into uh, little nooks and crannies. Okay, here's another fairly uh, fairly nice mature piece, and it's growing in kind of a weird way where it's got it's kind of split. But what you can do is like find a branch that's doing the same thing. And I find these roots to be sort of unsightly, so I'm going to try to hide them as much as I can. But I can take these, and I don't want them to bunch up too much because when they bunch up, they grow. Oh, it broke right off. They grow in all kinds of weird ways. So what I'm going to try to do is just get this worked here under these branches. And some of these rhizomes are very thin, so they're sort of snipping, snipping apart. Which is fine, because that's you can segment it that way. Pull these out. And and I'm going to go ahead and stash these roots. I know I just said you can let them grow into the ground and they will. But uh, especially on the initial setup, I like to I like to sort of stash these roots so I'm not looking at them forever while I wait for them to find their way to the substrate. Let's see. And this little guy I'll just put him in over here. Can I add to this? This is obviously going to be an Anubius tank. There was so much of that bunched into that aquarium. And I've got piece after piece of these little, these little chunks. So I can literally just fill this thing up with Anubius. It would be nice to have it spread out a little better. So I can have it all over the aquarium instead of all in one big glob like it was in the other tank. Now, of course there were a few other plants that were doing well, like this buse. Actually it looks really, really healthy and nice. Um, so it's pretty low. I'm going to just stick it right here in the front. And just be a little bit different texture right down there in the front of the tank. Yeah, this is virtually all Anubias, it looks like, in this bucket. I've got a few other uh, other kinds of plants that we're going to come across here in a minute, but man, we got a lot of this stuff. And you'll see what I was talking about with uh, not worrying about the rocks being in here, because we're going <laughs> to, everything's, everything on the bottom here is going to be fairly obscure and... Um, covered with these various Anubias plants. I'm trying to be real cognizant of the way that they're they're put in too, so that they're growing in a direction. So they'll kind of all grow out and uh, and stay good. Looks like it's getting a little dry over here. So I'm going to hose it down. It 
I've started dumping plants kind of in the side here just as I, I go through and trim them up. I've got some kind of funky cardinal plants. I think um, in a couple of days that they were sitting in the bucket, they started to die and kind of change. So I'm going to well, add just a very small amount of these to the back corner over there. Just kind of see how they grow out. I've got a couple of these. This is actually that uh, that Anubius that grows super tall in the in the steampunk tank. So uh, this might, if it grows uh, the full, to full growth, it'll probably outgrow even this tank. But I'm going to stick it in the back, and we'll see how it does. I've got a whole lot of Java fern. And uh, it's a nice different texture. It'd be nice if it was a, a little bit different color. But I'm going to just kind of stick it in here amongst, amongst the Anubias. Just to kind of break up the texture of this plant. It's going to be quite samey <laughs> around through here because of all the, uh, all the Anubias having the exact same type of leaf. Because I believe these are all the same species and everything. So uh, I'm going to kind of intermix some of this fern in there. And maybe that'll sort of break up the texture of these leaves just a little bit, make it, make it more interesting to look at. And I'm just going to kind of intersperse them, kind of mix them around in here. And I've got some more of these. Little small deals here. I'm going to stick them, kind of bury the roots in there just to kind of help them stay. Something like this. I've got a, a number of little small pieces of buse, and I believe these were just planted in here. Here's a nice long root on this one. I'm kind of giving them a little front action, and I'm not actually burying the rhizome, I'm just going to bury the root and hope that that holds it in there. Yeah, I was worried that rock would be obvious that it was holding this thing down and you can't even see it now. Sometimes you can get get it half in, pull some leaves out and then jam it back in there. Things like this can be tough since you're not planting them in the ground. You're just kind of getting them getting them exposed. You'll leave that rhizome above ground the best you can and uh, get you know, kind of point the roots down. Uh, all the rest of this stuff that I have here, this is all buse. There was a surprising amount of buse in that tank. I might do it the same way. It kind of grows the same way. It's got, it's got a rhizome that needs to stay above ground, and it's got roots. So it grows in a very similar way to most of the other plants in here. So I believe what I'm going to do with these is, uh, much like I did before, I'm just going to kind of find places for it. Now this one's got a little bit of a root, so I can maybe stick that, jam that root into the ground, and that will hold it. That will kind of hold it in place. From what I can tell, these don't like a lot of light either. Like, they they benefit from a lot of, from some light, but um, you definitely don't need to blast them with light. For them to survive so I feel pretty good sticking them in here in the lower areas of the aquarium. What I might do is just kind of go along the way here and add them into uh, different little spots along the bottom kind of like right up against rocks and things like that so maybe they'll grow up against those rocks. All right that's very well planted I'd say. And I think it's time to fill it up. Okay, we're filling it up just the way we did before. I've added some safe in there that will dechlorinate it pretty effectively. And I'm just filling it in here with the back chamber. All right, here we are. The water's all filled up and stuff. And it's time to kind of uh, work on the light. And what I've got is this 90 degree adapter. Now you see me install a Kessel with a gooseneck probably a few times, but uh, this is a 90 degree adapter. It came with this screw, uh, came with this screw on here. There are absolutely no instructions, so I'm completely guessing. But I think the way this is supposed to work, is this goes on like so. This screw's on here.
But of course the Kessel light has a, has a little bolt in the back and that should just screw on like so. Then we're going to tighten it down like that. And this will let this light hang down at a much, uh, a much better angle. So I can get it uh, directed right down at the tank without trying to bend this thing a whole lot. This is a, actually a very stiff uh, gooseneck. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this now. All right, so I've put this, uh, the gooseneck kind of over to one side just so I can get into the filter area. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this. This is a bag of seasoned biological material. I'm just going to put it straight into the bottom there. Now I've got another bag, and this is the bag from uh, that I actually pulled out of the Fluval Flex. And I want to add to it uh, some of this Biomatrix from Aqualife. I'll add a pretty decent amount in there. Seal it up. And just let it drop. And uh, the last piece here is, this is out of the Fluval Flex as well. And as you notice, I've cut off the top of it. There's actually a fair amount of algae growing on the very top of it. So I decided just to cut it off. And I'm going to put this in here to be sort of a, a little bit of mechanical filtration between between the um, the stuff that I've just put in there. And if I push it down a bit, this should just fit between the bevel, that beveled edge right there, and then the corner over here, and uh, provide a little bit of mechanical filtration. Not perfect, but a little bit of mechanical filtration in there. And I can certainly add to this later. I want to kind of see how the pump flows. Speaking of the pump, let's put that in. All right, so the pump is just going to slide down in here. Of course, I'm doing it so that the cord is going the way I want it to. I want the cord to come out this way. I'll go ahead and put it behind, behind here where it's going to need to go. And it's got a little companion piece like this. So this is just going to slide. That, if I kind of press it down a little bit, this little suction cup should grab it in the bottom. And this will just slide onto the end. All right, so easy peasy. Okay, so we're going to put on the heater. Uh, we've got a 100 watt heater that we're going to put on here. And it came with this little suction cup thing here. Now sometimes these can be difficult to figure out, so I just wanted to show you this real quick, right? So you got this part and this part, and what I do is I slide it in, kind of work it in sideways like so, and then I just twist it. And as you turn it around, eventually, you'll get it all the way inside, and that's the easy way to do that. So inside of here, there was this little thing. It kind of punches out like a little model kit part. And uh, it might look like a nothing little thing at first, but you want to hold on to it because it, it's a real handy little tool because it fits in here. Okay, I say it does. Okay, it fits in here. It'll actually help you adjust your temperature. So it's a little thing to sort of, uh, maybe especially if you've got it down in the tank and you can't reach it real well or you don't want to get your fingers in there. You can take this and uh, use it to adjust your temperature like so. Very neat. I got my finger right in the middle. I'm reaching down there really far and I'm just going to press in on the suction cups. Those are nice and stable and I want to work this into the top of it. Okay, I think I got it. Yes. Just push it down in there. I've already set the temperature I want. Now it's ready to go. So to help prevent evaporation, I bought uh, a piece of glass that fits the top of this almost perfectly. I'm just going to slide that into place. Here it is a few days after I've uh, initially started working on it. So I come up and get a quick shot with the phone. 
as you can see, we're starting to get this sort of a, uh, it's kind of like a mold or something that's on this wood. That is very, very typical. It happens, it happens every time I use spider wood, especially brand new spider wood. It will go away. Uh, some shrimp and other things will actually eat this stuff. It's not dangerous. It is a little unsightly, but the tank overall looks pretty good. Although I really like this layout, um, I wish there was a little bit more diverse colors in here. And I've kind of got an empty spot right there where I think I could probably put a sword plant in. Now I've got some sword plants down in the 50 or the, the 210 downstairs and they've never done super well. They've never grown much more than a bush. If they stayed like the same size, they'd look great there. But if they happen to grow really big, they also wouldn't be too out of balance because it's, it's kind of towards the back. It would hide some of this Anubius on the side, but that could always be pulled out if that became uh, more of an issue. But it would add it like a nice red color in there. Uh, I, I kind of wouldn't mind doing it right here too, but I'd like to, I'd like the space up in here to be sort of either empty or have a really, uh, a really small growing sort of carpeting plant. Uh, what I really want are the four leaf clovers. Kind of hard to find right now. And uh, I don't have any extra cash <laughs> to spend on it. So I might not, uh, I might just have to add this later or wait, you know, wait another month or so and uh, go ahead and buy those and add them later. But uh, I really like where it's at right now. Okay, so there's another plant I really want to add but I can't afford to really buy any right now. And that's a, a four leaf clover. If you look down here, see if I can zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see the, see it growing along through here. And it's growing amongst this uh, crypt parv. This, both of these two uh, carpeting plants grow really slow, but it looks like the parv's really starting to come into its own and grow. And, this also has been doing fairly well, and it's actually spread all the way back through here. But see, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, lost in, in all this other stuff. It's kind of lost in the mix, and I'm not really sure even how much of it I have. So what I'd like to do is, uh, I might just go ahead and pull it out of here, let the Crypt Parb have, have the carpet all to itself and then whatever I pull out of here I'll take and I'll just put upstairs in the other tank so it can grow and develop all on its own. Now this isn't going to give me a full carpet right away but uh, I think it will over time it should provide a, a fairly nice bit of carpeting plant or some some interesting growth down on the bottom. It'll be something different than the Crypt Parv that I've done quite a few times and of course the Monte Carlo, which is the, the definitely the easiest way to go for a carpeting plant and the least amount of weighting, especially if you have CO2. But I'm not sure I'm gonna do that yet. There's really no point in doing CO2 with Anubias, so. This is all immersed growth too. It's all been underwater, it's all grown and developed underwater. Anything that was, uh, it was optimized for above water has died off a long time ago because this tank's a couple years old. And so all I got is stuff that's, that's used to being underwater. What's unusual is I didn't know. Uh, see these like uh, multi leaves here? I had always thought that, that uh, the, the ones that grew underwater would only have one leaf where these seem to do quite often they'll have the four or three leaves Something like that. I saw. I see a lot of the single leaves also, and it's probably hard to tell in, in the mix of all this other stuff. But, but uh, yeah, I see a lot of the single leaves also. But it does a lot of these like multi-leaf ones, which is actually pretty neat. All right, let's see how much of this I can get. I'm gonna have to be real careful. What I'm gonna do is uh, this kind of grows in a little line. So I'm going to just try and find where it ends. See if I can pull it up that way. All right. And if I pull real gently, maybe I can just pull up the whole 
string of it all connected together. It grows in a big chain. So it should be all through here. Of course it's going to be mixed in with other stuff as well. But if I'm lucky, I'll pull really gently. I can do this without disturbing too much of the water and making it all mucky in here where I can't see. And right here we're kind of getting into a tangle, but it's coming out. This actually goes quite a ways in here. And even goes under this wood a little bit. Just get all this stuff out of the way. Okay, so I think what I want to do is I want to put that uh, I'm going to put that sword plant right here in the corner. The big one, that is. We'll put it kind of in the back. I ended up with a little small one. And uh, we might put it around on the other side, but let's start with this one here. It's important to remember that a lot of these sword plants can get quite large. So, you're going to want to at least get them uh, somewhat close to the background. Now it's unclear if this will stay small like this or because it's in a maybe a little bit better substrate. I'm sure it's a lot better substrate than, um, than the other tank. If it'll just take off. And if it takes off, if it's got more it gets more light, it's got better uh, food for the roots, then it could get quite large and we might have to move it again. But in the meantime, Get a little bit of color and a little bit different texture to kind of come up here in the back. Uh, my guess is this will really start to grow and it'll be kind of a larger t uh, plant back here on the back side. The substrate's really fine, so it's hard to, uh, sometimes it can be hard to get these little things to be buried, especially when they're all in a row and you tug on one part of it and then you're tugging on all of it and you start pulling other things out. It can be really tricky. I get as much of it anchored as I can and then I just kind of shovel some substrate on top of it. Make sure I got these leading plants. Some of these will creep right up out of the ground on their own. So you don't have to worry uh, a whole, whole lot. As long as you don't pull everything else out with it. Which it seems like I've done here. Try to bury that part back. Get this little guy back in place. So what's interesting is there was quite a bit more of this than I, than I expected. So I might be able to actually pull off a little bit of a carpet. There'll certainly be room to grow. Let's see if I can get the middle part in right here. I'm going to throw in some rocks in here too in a minute and that's going to further kind of weigh this down. but. It'd be really great if everything was kind of in its optimal, you know, leaves up where the they can see the light, roots down where they can feed. If I was mostly like that, I think these things will have a chance. Well, it really filled in this little space right here, uh, and I've got a bit more to go, so I think I might kind of go ahead and work my way around through here. Right, so I've got another fairly large section, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it in right here on this part. So I have it spread about quite a bit. We'll go ahead and get this in. We'll start it on this side. This one had a lot of those uh, weird, very clover-like, which is, you know, it's called four-leaf clover, but underwater. Usually you don't see those. I think I've mentioned that a few times already, but. All right. All right, so here's what we ended up with down there across the bottom. You'll see uh, all the little clover that I've planted and it's, it's pretty dense over here in this corner. And then we've got little smatterings here. Uh, what ended up working best with these was actually to take these larger segments and kind of make them smaller segments. Uh, making sure there was some root on each each piece of it. And I've got it kind of tapering around to the side and kind of going to the back a little bit here. Uh, a little less dense on this side. And then it sort of picks up. We get little clumps. I just try to continue it all the way over. 
I did end up with one little piece of crypt par that I just went ahead and threw in here to break up the texture a little bit. But all the rest of this is that four leaf clover. And those pebbles are gonna both hold uh, the plants down in here and sort of break up this black, which is sort of unnatural. You know, the, I don't know many places where you just have a bunch of black soil all over the ground. So it, uh, it's gonna add a little bit of color, kind of break up, break up all this blackness that's all through here. And we're gonna do that now. Uh, now I didn't do this universally across here, but one thing to keep in mind too, when you do stuff like this, uh, I try to keep my 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 growth as close as I can to uh, to the hardscape. Uh, sometimes it might make sense to kind of pull it a little bit more forward. Uh, but what I do is I try to do that and let it grow out, like let it grow out in a way, and I just think it adds a more natural look and sort of. Um, it keeps your eye uh, focused more towards the middle of the aquascape. Okay, so a lot of times I just do this with my hands, but I think this might be a little easier. I'll just put these uh, all the rocks in a little uh, cup right here. I'm just going to kind of shake some free here and there. I'm definitely going to go put a few on top of here. And I'll have to. I'll go back later and make sure that. I'm not covering up any important leaves that need to stay out. And I want to evenly kind of distribute these. Oh, a little heavy handed there. I'm just going to go all around to the front of the tank and add some stuff in. <laughs> really weighing that buse down. The buse is only like in there by its roots, it's not attached to anything, so some rocks will definitely help anchor that. And see how these kind of they kind of match uh, the dragon stone a little bit? I tried to get some rocks that were at least similar. Obviously, obviously not the same rocks, but they'll be close enough to where uh, the mind won't really they won't really associate that they're completely different rocks necessarily. Okay, so what you're looking at here is probably one week from the initial setup when I first filled it up with water and then another uh, maybe five days from when I finished up with the gravel and the other uh, other plants that are in the bottom of this tank. So this is definitely where I stop for now. I want to stop and kind of watch and, and wait and see how things grow. Uh, I'm really glad I didn't go nuts with the uh, Vesuvius sword. I was really tempted. Uh, I had a lot of Vesuvius sword in this tank next to it and I was really tempted to kind of pull that out and try it. But like a lot of fish that are very sensitive to new tanks, I think Vesuvius sword are, are kind of in the same category because uh, the one piece that I added in the back is already kind of withered and died. I have been checking the ammonia and there was a very uh, I'd say a very slight ammonia spike, uh, not like I've seen in some of the other aquariums. So uh, the ammonia spike in this was not uh, not overly significant. It was kind of small. I did go ahead and throw in some uh, Activate from Aqualife. This was a, a biological supplement to kind of help, help uh, steer this tank in the right direction. I've also already done two water changes. Uh, one as I was working with it, and two just in general, kind of a 50% water change, just to kind of keep uh, keep the water that's in there as as fresh as possible. When I initially set this up, I had planned on I had planned on just taking water from another tank and go ahead and, and using that to fill this up with, and really use uh, older water. But that ended up being sort of inconvenient because I had the hose already, and it was just easier to just fill it up from the tap and uh, add dechlorinator in there as I normally do, especially on the initial filling, because as you, you might remember, I filled this up and then I emptied it out. And then I filled it up again after I, I got the plants in there. I really hope the four leaf clover does well. Uh, uh, it was There was a lot more of it than I expected when I pulled it out of the 16 gallon, and uh, it is one of my favorite carpeting plants. Uh, it's one that I've almost got going and then like, I planted it along with Monte Carlo, and for a while it was neat and mixed over, but the Monte Carlo eventually 
enveloped it and just kind of killed it all out, starved it of nutrients and killed it out. I was a little afraid, like the Crypt Parv is, um, it's not as bad for that. It's a very slow growing plant, so uh, they were kind of coexisting, but it looked like the Crypt Parv was kind of getting the upper hand on it and maybe starting to uh, choke it out a little bit. I love uh, Crypt Parv almost as much as I like the, this other one. So I decided to pull it out, give it a place here where it can kind of live on its own. I did end up with one little piece of the parv just to, just to throw it in there. But I had a little bit of a regret with the gravel. It's a little lighter than I was expecting it to be. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell when you're holding the gravel in your hand versus when you get it wet and put it under a nice light. Uh, sometimes it looks a little different. It looks a little brighter than I wanted. And I was actually really tempted to go through there by hand, just pick all this out. But uh, I've decided just to leave it for now. So over time, algae and other things will uh, develop over the top of the rocks. They'll get a little bit dirty. Uh, they might even work their way into the substrate and stuff. So they probably won't be as a... Uh, and two, if the if these things, if these small plants really take off, they'll they'll end up uh, being more of those than there are rocks. So they'll be all in between the rocks and maybe maybe you'll see that more visually than you will uh, the stones and stuff. So I think for now I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm going to let them do their job, which is to hold these plants down and make sure they don't get accidentally pulled up, especially once I introduce fish in here and uh, other things that maybe will pick at the plants a little bit. I think a lot of times what happens is uh, it's not so much that the Fish are chewing on the plants and stuff. They're picking insects and algae and other things off of the plants and they'll accidentally uproot them, especially in this really super light substrate. Like all these soil-based substrates are, are really easy to accidentally pull the, pull the plants out of, which makes them a real pain to plant in. But it also, it also gives these things lots of room if they shoot out runners and stuff. It gives them makes it really easy for them to kind of navigate through there. They're, as the runners expand, they can easily move through that substrate. So it's definitely got its good points and its bad points there. Now it seemed like it took no time for this thing to become completely clear. Uh, I was a little worried on a couple of my recent aquascapes. I'll set them up and they'll just be foggy for like a week or two. Uh, I think my flora actually went completely brown and uh, stayed that way <laughs> for a while. So unlike recent aquascapes, I didn't add any botanicals or anything uh, anything really funky like that. That doesn't mean I might not do that in the future, but I did want to I didn't want to put anything down here that would kind of get in the way of these small plants growing. Pretty much this whole tank are slow growing plants, so I'm probably going to have to tone the light back a little bit just to make sure. Uh, if, if I start to see algae, I'll have to make sure it's it's toned down a little bit. Uh, when I set up a new tank, people always ask me, what are you going to put in it? What are your, your stocking, uh, stocking <laughs> choices for this tank? Sadly, this is a tank that I put together without a lot of thought as to what would go in it. Like, I, I did it purely for the aesthetics that you see here. And uh, what I put in it will be a, a decision for another day. And I don't think there's anything wrong with not having, uh, not locking yourself into a particular type of fish, uh, or because there are a lot of fish that you do need to specifically uh, create your tank to be friendly to. And then there's kind of this general standard that can uh, satisfy a lot of fish. I mean, for the most part, with every fish that I own, it goes into a very similar type of tank. And usually the biggest adjustment I make might be to the heater. Uh, this tank might be warmer than this tank and so on. So as far as possible fish for this aquarium, well, there's a good chance I might be taking the fish from the 20 gallon and moving them into here. Uh, maybe gradually as, uh, as this starts to mature. Or I might get another whole set of fish and, and put them in. Uh, the 20 gallon kind of needs some work again. It's never really worked perfectly. I, I keep getting uh, little algae blooms and stuff like that. And it doesn't look, it just doesn't look as good as it could. Like I'd really like to rework the aquascape in there if nothing else. I'd be kind of scared with the algae that's on some of the plants to move them to a brand new tank like this one. Um, or start completely over again because I'd be starting with some algae right away. 
but I would kind of like to rework that tank a little bit and see if I couldn't, uh, I don't know, do something to make it a little bit better. Another thing I get asked about literally every day is uh, CO2. And although the tank right next to it's running CO2 and I had mused about perhaps perhaps splitting that and putting a small amount over here also, I think uh, because of the type of plants that are in here, I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, there's no real need for CO2 in a lot of different aquariums. There are some plants that specifically require it. Uh, and a lot of plants that do much better with it. I think excessive CO2 in a tank with a lot of slow growing plants is probably gonna give me more algae than it will um, grow, you know, lush growing plants. So for now there won't be any CO2. It's got really good quality substrate so when the roots from the Anubias and all these other plants make their way into the substrate and there's quite a lot of it. I actually added a lot of substrate in here. Uh, when it makes their way into there, it'll get a lot of nutrients from the roots, and I think, I think that's going to be enough to make this a pretty healthy tank. It's also got a light that's really been proven. Uh, these little Kessel lights have, have done really, really well. Um, I think my one beef with the Kessel lights is that they, you know, when you put them on a controller, they're not granular enough. I'd like it to like get really super dim for extended period of time, so you can still enjoy your tank without like it being bombarded with light. It gets to about 25% and then it just cuts off. So, um, although it does have kind of a sunrise, sunset effect, the colors don't change a whole lot from one side of the spectrum to the other. And the brightness is just not, uh, not comparable because it gets to, like I said, about 20, 25% and then it just shuts off. Uh, whereas the other ones can get down in, I'd say, 5% range before they shut out. I mean, it, you almost can't tell the lights are on and then they, so it's a real, real granular uh, dimming of the lights, which I, both the fish appreciate because they come out, like it's, it's really interesting to see fish in these dim light scenarios where the lights, and that's something I've never experienced in a lot of other aquariums. Uh, the fish really come out in the evening, like they get, and, and the morning for that matter, when the lights are really super dim and like the Megaflex or something like that, uh, you really see a lot of activity at that time. And uh, it's really interesting. But I'm not worried about that for now. In fact, now that, I have a, now that I have a Kessel on both of these tanks, I might get another controller and just go ahead and rig them up together. So even though it doesn't dim as much, it's still a little something. And it, I think it lets you kind of extend your photo period a little bit because the light's not being you know, at full strength bombarded the whole time. Uh, you got kind of a gradual build up and then a gradual takedown. And it seems at least like I'm able to kind of cheat and extend my, my photo period or my time with the lights on by quite a ways. Mostly that's great because, uh, you know, if I do a regular schedule either, uh, the lights are not gonna be on most of the day. And I, especially now that I work in this room, every day for a lot of the day. It's nicer to have the thing on at least, even if it's not super bright. Uh, it'd be nice to kind of have it on and look in there. So I'm really happy with this tank so far. It went together really well. Uh, the way it works uh, seems to be pretty good. I had at least one comment on the stand and it was, it's kind of wobbly and it's still, it's still a little wobbly, but it is a lot more stable once the water is on there and there's like some weight. Uh, these stands, of course, I think they look better, but they're definitely not as good as maybe the homemade ones, uh, big two by fours and stuff like that. Uh, I wish I was better at making things like that. Maybe it's a project I need to work on for the end of the year, <laughs> learning how to make stands. It definitely would be neat to make something more custom uh, where I could fit like a couple of these aquariums and really do this wall right, like be more efficient with the, the way the wall is. I do like the height of it and stuff. Uh, these, this stand, I believe, is on the seven porch side along with this. Of course, I picked this one up when I got the Fluval Flex. Uh, it's the same stand I used on there. I just kind of picked it up at my local store. And I, I think at the time it had a skew on it and I tried to look it up and I could not find it for sale anywhere. So uh, I wasn't able to share it at that time. It might be on the seven ports website though. Uh, I'll have to take a look, of course, all the paperwork and everything I had for this are 
years old and um, I, I've lost them. So I think I'm going to wrap it up right there. If you have any questions, uh, leave, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. I try to be good about answering questions. A huge thank you to my Patreons. I wouldn't have been able to build this tank without your support and uh, your continuing the support and, and I really, really appreciate it. I hope seeing this video today earns a uh, subscription from you. Very few of my viewers or about half of my viewers aren't subscribed and that's fine. But uh, I'd like to see more of you back. So please be sure to hit subscribe and hit the thumb if I've helped you out or you felt like you've been entertained by something I've put together. Uh, that would really help me out a lot as well. I've got more videos coming for you soon, including a secret garden under my 210, which isn't as silly as it sounds. Uh, more terrariums. Uh, KP and I put together some terrariums. You might have seen them already. Uh, not the greatest terrariums ever made by a long shot, but definitely, uh, definitely kind of got us in the mode and at least got one terrarium done or two terrariums <laughs> done and under our belt uh, as we move on to bigger and better ones. But I'll be back real soon with some more videos. I can't wait to see you then. Until next time, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up like this. I think I'm gonna wrap it up like this. Wrap it up like this. What's up?